Sam University's School of Allied Health Sciences, where I earned my Bachelor of Science degree in physical therapy. The most satisfying part of my job is being able to take players through the rehabilitation process after sustaining an injury and getting them back on the field competing at a high level. I owe much of my success to the late great Dr. Arnold Bell, a FAMU physical therapy professor. His specialty was sports physical therapy. He allowed me to shadow him while he treated athletes at local high school football games. From that moment on, I was determined to become a physical therapist in the sports arena. My professors were very supportive and always available to help me make the grades in an intense and competitive program. Thanks to my family training and education, grad school was pretty easy for me. Whether you want to work directly with patients, on the sidelines, or as a manager in a healthcare facility, FAMU's School of Allied Health Sciences will equip you to succeed and lead in a stable field with many opportunities. If you have that innate ability to help others, healthcare and allied health are the way to go. My career in the NFL is a true testament to the great things happening at FAMU every day. See for yourself how the FAMU School of Allied Health Sciences rich history can change your future. The School of Allied Health Sciences was established in 1982 to address a growing need for access to quality education in a field of rapidly growing health professions. The school has five divisions, cardiopulmonary science, healthcare management, health informatics and information management, occupational therapy, and physical therapy. Overall, BYU ranks as the number one producer of African-American allied health professionals in Florida. And the university has the only cardiopulmonary science program in the state. Its Division of Occupational Therapy is the number one producer of African-American occupational therapists in the country. And health facilities and patients around the world benefit from the contributions of our doctors of physical therapy. I'm Dr. Cynthia Hughes-Harris, Dean of the School of Allied Health Sciences. Based on our accomplishments, goals, and multiple levels of activity, it is easy to understand why our constant flow of energy allows us to say Allied Health is on the move. Great things are happening at FAMU every day. of Seven Hills in Florida's capital city, covering every corner of the Big Bend. This is the award-winning News 20 at 5, live. Good evening, welcome to Family TV 20 at 5. I'm Taylor Bishop. And I'm Bray Baker. We have some good and bad news for FAMU and Florida State's commuters. The newly renovated version of FAMU Way will finally be opening up tomorrow. <sighs> But Wanish Way and Eugenia Street will be closed until October 15th, right, time, right in time for the start of FAMU's homecoming. The road is closing to give construction workers enough time for the roadway to be completed and, the, and to be connected to the existing work. For more information on detours and road maps, please visit TowGov.com and search FAMU Way for updates. Staying with FAMU News, FAMU officials have announced that they've reached a settlement with the family of deceased former Marching 100 drum major Robert Champion. Champion passed away in November of 2011 at the Florida Classic in Orlando after he was brutally beaten during a hazing incident. FAMU and Champion's family have agreed on a $1.1 million settlement. Another stipulation of the deal was for a public apology to be issued. The responsibility will be handled by Board of Trustee members Rufus Montgomery. This announcement is coming weeks before the civil suit was taken to trial. And health inspections are critical for public food establishments. Customers are concerned on how effective these inspections are. Multimedia journalist Mary Chesting tells us more. Eating out is common for the average college student, but the question is, are they enjoying their meals in a clean environment? The Division of Hotels and Restaurants inspects all public food service establishments according to the risk-based inspection frequency.
Manager Tony Footman for a local restaurant here in Tallahassee tells us how they keep their restaurant. Our employees first go through a safety procedure. It's online. It's a course that they take so that they can know what needs to be cleaned, how does it need to be cleaned, what needs to be stored at a certain temperature. Each employee has a set time where they go back and they know, okay, we need to do this while the business is slow. The risk-based inspection frequency program says each public food service establishment is given an assessment of a one to four risk level based on inspection of compliance history, the type of food and preparation, and the service. Kadira Allen, a frequent diner, gives her perspective on health inspections for uh, local I restaurants. Think so. I think that health inspections could be a lot more thorough in their process and how they go about um, checking and inspecting restaurants. According to DBPR, health violations are judged off of numerous categories, some including food obtained from an approved source, parasite destruction for raw undercooked animal products, and food not being reserved. Health inspections occur based on the maintenance of the facility. If you're a restaurant owner, remember to keep it clean. I'm Mary Chesney for News 20 at 5. You can find a list of violations through the Division of Hotels and Restaurants. To contact them, go to myfloridalicense.com. Many people have already started to break out their jackets as we transition into the colder months. But for those citizens of Tallahassee who do not have a home to go to at the end of the day, it is important to know there are shelters open for them. The Kearney Center nearly feeds nearly 600 people in every day and provides overnight safety for over 240 women and men. Monique Ellsworth has more. Since we opened up this facility in um, April of 2015, we've definitely seen an increase in the number of clients that we've been serving each night, um, more so than we saw when we were located on Tennessee Street, and I think that has to do with the fact that the facility is capable of providing a greater array of services, so we do anticipate there being an increase in the number of folks that we serve during a the winter. A complaint has been filed against local Tallahassee Police Chief Michael DeLeo over his relationship with a police investigator. According to Sergeant Brian Davis, who was arrested in March after being found in a hotel room with a prostitute, their relationship has been causing a disruption, excuse me, within the department. In Davis's seven-page complaint, he stated the dating relationship between DeLeo and the investigator is in a violation of state policies, state law, and the department's general orders. Davis is currently being charged with misdemeanor, solicitation of a prostitute, and is set to stand trial later this month. And with the beginning of the fiscal year around the corner, city commissioners discussed the 27% property tax increase with the Republican Diversity Coalition. Multimedia journalist Berea Baker has more. Before the preliminary budget hearing Wednesday night, the Republican Diversity Coalition of Tallahassee met with City Commissioners Scott Maddox and Curtis Richardson to discuss the proposed tax increase. Residents and students voiced their concerns about the 27% property tax hike. The main concern of the residents was the financial burden that increase posed to small business owners, homeowners, and student housing communities. The tax increase proposed by City Manager Anita Thompson is to help fund 18 new officers for the City of Tallahassee's Police Department. Member of the RDC, John Paul Bailey, believes other options should be explored in order to alleviate the strain on the residents. Well, I'd just like to say that I think that uh, we, we don't need this tax increase at this time. I mean, I, I can see that we can find places in the budget that we can. City officials agreed in a 4 to 1 vote to lower the property tax increase to 13%. Due to the projected population increase outlined in studies, City Commissioner Richardson believes that this is a small price to pay for a third of what the city actually needs. Uh, so we're just kind of scratching the surface, even if we are able to fund these 18 additional offices. The final public hearing and vote concerning the budget will be held on September 24th at 6 p.m. in the City Commission Chambers in City Hall. Lorraine Baker, Family Team 20. For more updates on the budget or to receive an agenda for the upcoming budget hearing, visit talgov.com.
And as a state, Florida hit a 44 year low last year as it pertains to crime. But Tallahassee currently leads the state with a 775 violent crimes per 1000 residents. More than 88% of Florida communities have a lower crime rate than Tallahassee. Across the state, reported crime has decreased by 5% from 2013. However, Leon County's crime rose 7%, making it the city with the highest crime rate in America, according to NeighborhoodScout.com. Coming up on News 20 at 5, the latest in the Bethune-Cookman shooting. Also, the Pope is on the move. We'll give you more details on his whereabouts. And is another government shutdown looming? Stay tuned for more details. You're watching News 20 at 5. The School of Allied Health Sciences was established in 1982 to address a growing need for access to quality education in a field of rapidly growing health professions. The school has five divisions, cardiopulmonary science, healthcare management, health informatics and information management, occupational therapy, and physical therapy. Overall, FAMU ranks as the number one producer of African-American allied health professionals in Florida. And the university has the only cardiopulmonary science program in the state. Its Division of Occupational Therapy is the number one producer of African-American occupational therapists in the country. And health facilities and patients around the world benefit from the contributions of our doctors of physical therapy. I'm Dr. Cynthia Hughes-Harris, Dean of the School of Allied Health Sciences. Based on our accomplishments, goals, and multiple levels of activity, it is easy to understand why our constant flow of energy allows us to say Allied Health is on the move. Great things are happening at FAMU every day. Have you noticed the increase in colorful wildflowers throughout Florida? Thanks to sales of the state wildflower license plate, many important projects have taken root planting along highways and within communities, educating homeowners about the benefits of native landscaping, nourishing the pollinators that make other crops possible, and researching new ways to protect Florida's unique environment. With the state wildflower license plate, you can help add beauty and color to Florida. Welcome back to News 20 at 5, I'm Brea Baker. A man suspected of killing two Bethune-Cookman students has died. York Biden hung himself in his Daytona Beach cell. Biden lived with BCU students Deanna McDonald, Tymesha Carswell, and former BCU student Mike Micah Parham. Police says Biden shot and killed McDonald and Carswell after they asked him to move out. Biden was arrested and charged with two counts of first-degree murder and aggravated assault. Parham remains hospitalized and is in critical condition. The Pascal County School Board approved its 2015-2016 budget. The district, the district excuse me, is allocating $1.2 billion. Teachers can expect a 3% pay raise. Pascal County will also receive $21.3 million in state funding. Property taxes will drop slightly to 7.11%. School enrollment increased by more than 1,000 students, and the county expects to have more next year. More than 69,000 students students are currently enrolled in Pascal County Schools. And America has announced they will allow over 100,000 Syrian refugees into America at the beginning of 2016. CNN reporter Ben, excuse me, Ben Weedman has more. She barely made it to the front of the line for the bus, whimpering enough, enough. <laughs> This woman from Syria, overcome by exhaustion from a journey that paused in the Croatian border village of Tovarnik. We never imagined this trip would be so hard, says Samih from Damascus. We thought after all we've already suffered, they would welcome us differently than this. 
Thousands flocked here from Serbia after Hungary slammed shut its border. Yet another night in the rough, this tiny hamlet's population suddenly swelled by thousands. Yet again, the tired, the desperate, the destitute from Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan and beyond, stranded and waiting for a solution. This is a real disaster on Europe's doorstep and the European Union is doing very little to resolve it. We just see thousands and thousands of people on the move every day. Wherever they get blocked, they end up in a similar situation like this. The absurdity of this seemingly endless odyssey. Some of these people 48 hours ago were throwing rocks and clashing with Hungarian riot police on the Hungarian-Serbian border. Two days later, we see Hungarian police herding them onto buses into Hungary. The United States Secretary of State John Kerry announced that the U.S. would significantly, significantly excuse me, increase the number of overall worldwide immigrants it will accept in the next two years. A new hack has been made discovered for Android phones. Hackers can use the emergency dialer to hack into the phone. Hackers can simply copy a, and paste a password more than 40,000 characters long. The hacker then opens the camera and forces the phone to ask for a password. The long password overloads the phone's hard drive and makes the app crash. The phone will recover after a few minutes and unlock the user's home screen. The hack has only been affects phones running on Lollipop. Google released a patch to fix the problem. The issue has already been fixed for Nexus phones. Pope Francis Pope Francis arrived in East Cuba today. The Pope met with Fidel and Raul Castro. The leaders discussed humanitarian, environmental, and political issues. The Pope also made light of comments he made about communism. Francis held a celebratory mass in Havana, Cuba. The Pope will arrive in the U.S. on Tuesday. And four people were rescued off a burning boat over the weekend off the coast of Texas. And Good Samaritans are being praised for rescuing the boaters. Natasha Barrett tells us more. At first, they noticed a little bit of smoke, but they thought it was oil burning off of the boat's engine. But they could not see what others could see in the water. Boaters told them there were flames coming from their boat off of the Galveston jetty yesterday. I was scared something might happen to him. The second I saw the fire, all I thought was just grab Jared and throw him down so we'd get into the water. Brittany Blackman already had her six-year-old son Jared in a life jacket on the boat. She threw him down to me and said, uh, get, get our son. So she threw him to me. I put him at the back of the boat. We were tightening up his life jacket, making sure it was all safe and secure for him. Little Jared listened to his mother. I climbed up the ladder with, up and then to get, to, to get away from the smoke. It was, still, it was coming up to the captain place. Brittany and her son swam to the first people on a boat who saw the fire and rushed to help. Brittany's boyfriend and the captain were next. He jumped off the side and I jumped off the back and two separate boats got us. One went one way and I went the other way. Then within seconds the boat was engulfed in flames. The Coast Guard says the boat's tank exploded. When you're in a situation like that you just, you just do, you don't, you don't stand around. Two boaters say they were in the right place at the right time to rescue the family. We started to pull up to them, but uh, by then the, the flames were getting too big, too hot, you know, so we, we told them just get out of there, you know, jump, jump and we'll pick you. We were grateful that they were there because uh, when it first broke down, if we would have turned around and went back, we would have been in the middle of nowhere with nobody. And what a miraculous rescue with all four lives being saved off the Texas coast. I'm glad to see that everyone made it out okay. President Barack Obama met with Democratic leaders on the impending government shutdown. The president met with Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid Thursday. The three leaders agreed Democrats and Republicans must come to a short-term funding agreement. House Republicans agreed the bill should be passed, but some refused to agree to the bill unless it also defunds Planned Parenthood. The government is set to shut down on Wednesday, September 30th. And now here's a quick look at entertainment news with Gabrielle Dawkins. This is your daily entertainment with Gabrielle Dawkins and there were some big wins this weekend at the, Grand, at the Emmys. After six seasons, the Game of Thrones wrapped up a record breaking 12 awards from its 24 nominations. And not to mention Viola Davis became the first African American to win an Emmy for Best Actress in a Drama Series. 
Moving on, Johnson & Johnson and England's, England's Best decided to drop The View after two of their hosts made controversial comments about nurses. Nurses across the U.S. retaliated with support from Miss Colorado using the hashtag Nurses Unite. Bahar and her co-hosts later apologized. Two Hollywood producers were charged and arrested with operating a $21 million Ponzi scheme. Two members from Skyline Pictures convinced over 140 people to invest their savings towards an independent film titled Not Forgotten. After the movie flopped, grossing only $54,000, the pair continued to solicit funds for more movies, convincing clients that there was a 10 to 18 percent return on their investments. The LA District Attorney is currently investigating this case. That about does it for your entertainment. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you for that, Gabby. And Shakoria, what can we expect for today's weather? Well, for today's weather, it is pretty cloudy today, but we will be seeing a few scattered showers today and tomorrow. I'll have more for you all after the break. Stay tuned. You're watching News 20 at 5. Introducing a mobile application that can open up an entire new world for the orange and green faithful with the ability to check out the latest in-campus news, events, athletic scores, and much, much more. Specifically designed for the family. Whether it's linking to your class courses from your mobile device, looking through maps to find specific buildings on campus, or just having some fun looking through uploaded videos and photos, a great addition to your mobile family student lifestyle. Get your family out today! Welcome home, back to friends, family, and loved ones. You've done your duty for your country. Now, it's time to do your duty for yourself. Chart a new course and achieve honor for you and your family. Start with a top-notch education that will take you to new terrains. Soldier on at Florida A&M University. when I was 11 years old. After that, I never looked back. I've had the opportunity to make music with some of the greats and even perform for the legendary B.B. King. Right now, I'm composing the soundtrack for the music of my life. And of all the stages that I've ever performed on, this one, on the hill, hits closest to home. I'm prepared to perform in any area of my professional career because fam, you taught me. Welcome back to TV News 20 at 5. I'm Shakoria Burns for your Monday forecast. For today's forecast, it's pretty cloudy today with a stray shower being possible later on in the evening. The high is 87, but it does feel like 91 degrees. The humidity today is not too high, but not too low at the percentage of 51. Winds are blowing north-northeast at 5 miles per hour. Expect for the sun to set at 7.37 p.m. For tonight's forecast, it will be mostly cloudy, but expect a few stray showers tonight. The low will be 68 degrees. Winds will be blowing north-northeast at 5 miles per hour. Now for tomorrow's forecast, it will be partly cloudy, but there will be a few showers during 1 o'clock and 4 o'clock. The high will be 87 degrees and the low will be 67 degrees. Winds will be blowing northeast at 6 miles per hour. For our area temperatures, in Bainbridge, Georgia, the high is 89 degrees and the low will be 67 degrees. In Albany, Georgia, the high is going to be 86 degrees and the low will be 66 degrees. Expect a few scattered showers tonight. In Marianna, Florida, the high will be 87 degrees and the low will be 66 degrees. Also expect a few late night scattered thunderstorms as well. In Thomasville, Georgia, the high will be pretty, it will be pretty cloudy with the high being 87 and the low will be 68. In Moultrie, Georgia, it will be pretty cloudy as well where the high will be 89 and the low will be 68. 
In Quincy, Florida, the high will be mostly cloudy today with the high being 89 and the low will be 68. And in Crawfordville, Florida, the, it will be mostly cloudy where the high will be 88 degrees and the low will be 68 degrees. Now for our five-day forecast. On Tuesday, it will be partly cloudy with a few afternoon thunderstorms. The high is 87 and the low will be 67 degrees. On Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, we'll be seeing sunny skies where the high will be 88 and the low will be 67 degrees on Wednesday. Thursday, the high will be 80, 87 degrees and the low will be 66 degrees. And on Friday, the high will be 88 degrees and the low will be 66 degrees. And that's all today for the weather. I'm Shakoria Burns, and thank you so much for joining. Now back to you all at the desk. Thank you for that, Shakoria. And coming up in sports, so Travis, we had a busy sports weekend. What do you have for? Excuse me. What do you have for us coming up after the break? Well, family is set to have their first home game of the season this weekend, and Jameis Winston has a lot to he's had a lot to celebrate about. Excuse me. All that next in sports. It's on us to stop sexual assault. To get in the way before it happens. To get a friend home safe to not blame the victim. It's on us. To look out for each other. To, to not, not look, look the, the other way. way. It's on us. To stand up. To step in. To take responsibility. It's on us. All of us. To, to stop, stop sexual. sexual. The second moral act of 1890 paved the way for historically black colleges and universities to be created. And in 1891, the state of Florida transformed the state normal college for college students into Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University. FAMU started training students in agriculture and the mechanical arts. Today, FAMU's College of Agriculture and Food Sciences is the land-grant arm of the university. The college offers four undergraduate degrees, agribusiness, veterinary technology, biological and agricultural systems engineering, and agricultural sciences with options, a master of science degree, and one doctoral degree program in entomology with the University of Florida. The college consistently ranks in the top two programs at the university for research grants. Students have excellent opportunities to work and engage in viticulture, air and water quality, and biological control. The college is home to the Office of International Agricultural Programs, Corporate Extension Programs, and the Naval ROTC. I am Dr. Robert Taylor, Dean of the College of Agriculture and Food Sciences. Our motto is, come and grow with us. Great things happen at Florida A&M University every day. Welcome back to News 20 at 5. I'm Travis Milton with your sports. The Florida a and University Rattlers took on the Bulldogs of South Carolina State University Thursday as they took their first conference loss on the season with a 36-0 defeat. The Rattlers are still winless on the season as they prepare to take on the Tennessee State Tigers Saturday at 6 p.m. for the first home game of the season. And the family volleyball team struggled, struggled early on in the season but are hopeful as they prepare for conference play. The Florida a and University Lady Rattlers volleyball team are still in search for their first victory on the season. Saturday, the Lady Rattlers faced the Lady Aggies of Texas A&M as they went 0-3 for 3 in a best-of-five match. Head coach Tanya Trifonoff says that the team made a lot of errors, which ultimately costed them the game. I think we made a lot of errors. I think that the, the talent level and, and the skill level is pretty much there with Texas A&M. We just made way too many errors in a row. Uh, might have been because it's a new rotation again. We got some players injured, 
Do we have them practice? Do we have to make adjustments in the lineup? So you can tell that the skills are there. It just we're not making plays, and that's what it comes down to sometimes. You know, like and we're making a lot of unforced errors, and all those errors, you know, like I mean, it, they usually don't happen. But it's early in the season, so hopefully by conference play we'll start eliminating them. And then when you're playing against a good team and you're making consecutive errors, one after the other, then when you start playing rally after rally, you know, like sometimes you're gonna lose some of those rallies. The Rattlers have faced many teams ranked in the top 25 or better, so they feel that their level of play is there. Even though Coach Trevor's Rattlers have struggled early in the season, they still believe they're ready for a championship. I think these top 25 teams, top 50 teams think us ready for conference. Um, I think that this is getting us ready for a championship, and I think it's great that we're playing these teams. These teams have a lot of experience and have gone to NCAA and stuff like that, so I think it's really good for us and um, good for our competition level. The Rattlers will enter conference play as they face the South Carolina State Lady Bulldogs on Friday. For News 20 at 5, I'm Travis Milton. The Lady Rattlers now move to 0-13 on the season as they were defeated by the University of South Florida Bulls Sunday. And the Jacksonville Jaguars gained a 23-20 win over the Miami Dolphins Sunday. Jaguars rookie Jason Myers kicked a 28-yard field goal with 40 seconds remaining to seal the deal. The Jaguars are now 1-1 one and, one and will take on the New England Patriots Sunday. Kickoff starts at 1 p.m. That's all we have in sports. Back to you at the desk. Thank you for that, Travis. And coming up after the break, a quick recap on one of the many festivals that took place over the weekend. Stay tuned. You're watching News 20 at 5. This close. This close. Two children more deaths. This close to making history. Of our one team, one team. We are this close. 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 This close to changing the world. We are this close to making sure no child suffers a crippling disease ever again. We are this close to making history. We are this close to ending polio. Because we are this close to ending polio. We are this close to ending polio. We are this close to changing the world. This close. All we need is you. Is you. Is you. Is you. We are this close. This close. Be a part of history at rotary.org slash end polio. Welcome back to News 20 at 5. I'm Brea Baker. Peace of San 2015 was celebrated this weekend at Clayman Plaza. The event served as a town festival and was time for Filipino nationals to come together and share their national heritage with the broader community. The event was sponsored by the Big Bend Filipino American Association. It included a fashion show, art, cultural singing and dancing, and of course, Filipino cuisine. Traditional Filipino wear was worn by the women, men, and children. And so that's going to do it for Shakoria, Travis, and I'm Taylor. And I'm Rhea Baker. Thanks for watching News 20 at 5.